a leader's visit. The five keys to stopping by or dropping in on your team or organization as a leader that enhances your impact and leadership and that of those that you are leading. Now, I've been on both sides of this. I have been the frontline employee being dropped in on, and I've also been the quote unquote big boss doing the dropping by. Let's start with the frontline experience. Maybe this sounds familiar to you. About a week prior, your supervisor gets noticed that the big boss will be stopping by either by themselves or usually with an entourage. And all heck breaks loose. There's massive cleanup, actual scrubbing, making sure the files are right, and the proverbial warning to staff for everyone to be on their best behavior. Then it's the day of the visit. And we used to be able to see outside the congregation of the big boss, their entourage, or other big bosses. As they were walking towards the building, seemingly in slow motion like an action figure in a movie, with wind blowing through their hair, and they come through the door, and everyone is standing all tidied at attention. Now, one of two things would happen, at least in my experience. The big boss, bosses, or entourage would do a lap around the building, do the Queen's wave to everyone, and get out of there as fast as humanly possible, checking off the box of the drop-in, of the visit. While sometimes they would gather all together. And in the moments of gathering, whether a half an hour or an hour, you will watch all of the supervisors attempt to elbow and jockey in to get inside the club, typically the boys club. And I watched a lot of great female bosses lose that battle of jockeying in into the conversation. And this never made sense to me as a more frontline employee. Number one, I wasn't the scurrying type. It's not in my nature. I never understood. Wouldn't it be best that things were as tidy as possible before they came in? That way all the time. Now, I will say when we have company over to the house, I will run the vacuum and light a candle. However, I want my house in order so much that anybody can drop in at any time and it be okay. So that's one thing that I didn't understand. The other thing that I really didn't understand is that I knew at that time that real leaders wanted real information and didn't care where it came from. It's hard as a leader to come in and fix or address something that you don't know is broken or an issue. So that massive tidying up can rob them of the experience of making the culture better, the product better, the team better, and a better impact for whatever your team or whoever your team is servicing. So that never made sense for me. Now, as the big boss coming through, we have to understand, and you must understand as a leader, how your people see you. They don't see you as your first name, most likely. They see you as your title. So when you walk in or drop by, everybody stands up to attention. They're at their best, most likely. So you may not be seeing the real issue, having the real conversation. So I want to share with you the five keys, and we're going to start with key number one, obviously, and it's called the expected drop-in. Number two, the unexpected drop-in. Number three, now get out of the way. Number four, the chat. And then lastly, we want to be the customer. So let's get into the expected drop-in. You're a leader there are going to be some expected paths that I'm encouraging you to take because we cannot lead simply coming to our office, closing the door and running our life and the company, the business over email. And that's including if you are virtual or hybrid. We have to be more about not only our skill and administrative ability, but also our connection ability. So that expected path, what is it? It may be when you walk into work, and you physically walk through the door, there's a path to get from the door to your office. Make sure you take an expected path. 
So you take that same path every day. Maybe you're visiting, I was talking to a leader, Win Clayball, great, great leader of Paul Mitchell Schools. I know I don't have hair, neither does he. Still runs a hair company. He mentioned that it takes 45 minutes for him to get to his office and it's okay because he dedicates that to his staff. Can you dedicate? You may only be going to the office one day, two days, a week. That day or that hour is not for you. It's for your people. Take that expected path. Let people know where you're going to be and where they can find you. Can they know, do they know that around this time, you, the leader, is there? So maybe it's that path walking to your desk, walking to your office. Maybe it's midday. You take a walk expectantly around the same time every day to the visit, visit department A through J. The expected path. Let people know where you're going to be. It's amazing what that may do to production. It's amazing what that may do to culture because people can know who you are and they speak nicely to you, but also to their co-workers, production goes up. It also makes your face recognizable. On those expected walks, know the names of your people. We're gonna get into that with the chat. Chat with your people, it's not simply a walk. I had a boss one time that if she committed a crime right now, I would not be able to pick her out of a police lineup. Because every time I saw her in the hallway, she was doing like this. Now notice, you don't see my face. However, you may be able to identify as I would her, the top of her head. Don't let that be you. Walk around, head up, eyes up, smiling, making eye contact. Make sure you know people's names. Have a chit chat. Stay and observe. And now we'll get into the next part. Guys, thanks so much. Stay tuned.